Hi, this is Bill here at PowerStrokeHealth.com. In this section, we're going to talk about 6.4 catastrophic engine failures. Okay, there's several different ways that these things die, and uh, uh, usually they're cataclysmic. They take the whole motor when they go, uh, and it's all emissions control related. We got a truck here, tow truck, 160,000 miles. It's been run hard most of its life. About three weeks ago, it came in with a uh, turbocharger failure, which I'm going to show you. We replaced the turbocharger. Three weeks later, it's back, the motor's scorched. So now I'm going to go through a step-by-step -step process of exactly how this engine unraveled itself and went through a, from a couple thousand dollar turbocharger repair to a twelve thousand dollar engine complete rebuild. And at the end of this section, I'm going to offer you a solution on how to fix this. It's relatively inexpensive and will protect your turbocharger, protect your EGR cooler, and more importantly, your pocketbook from having something like this happen to you as a 6.4 owner. Let me tell you something. One thing about a 6.4 Everybody cries about six liters. Oh, the six liter, the six liter. Let me tell you something. Anything that happens to a six liter costs twice as much in a six four. And nine times out of ten, when a six four makes it to my shop and they've had severe problems, it's usually trash the motor. And when I say trash the motor, the block is destroyed, the heads are destroyed, there's nothing left there but maybe a few fuel injectors and an injector pump. To fully understand the vulnerability of this engine, you have to understand a couple things about the emissions control systems. Now, this is a 6.4 that's complete and out of the vehicle. Uh, easy to inspect here. And uh, this is exhaust system. Uh, you have a catalytic converter and then you have what's called a DPF. What happens is, is that the DPF is really the center of the problem that occurred here. It's the beginning and the ending of the problem. The DPF is what's called a diesel particulate filter. The DPF actually catches the soot that is in, produced by incomplete combustion uh, inside the diesel engine. So it catches here as soot and then it goes what's into what's called regeneration mode. Now, regeneration mode, uh, basically what it happens is, is that on the two rear cylinders, seven and eight cylinders, the uh, computer will fire the fuel injectors on the exhaust stroke. So what it's doing is it's pushing, you know, 12 to 1400 degree heat out of the, ex out of the exhaust. It comes up through and goes through the turbocharger and out and into the exhaust system. It burns this, uh, this soot and turns it into ash. Well, that's all fine and well when everything's working correctly, but when you start to have a, a breakdown in the systems, then it becomes ugly. Now, especially in a tow truck or any truck that's working hard, it's going to regen more because it's pumping more fuel. The engine's running hard. It's running rich all the time. And <clears throat> what will happen is, is that this, this DPF will clog. What occurs at this point is that the engine stays in regen mode, so you're constantly having this heat. You got this huge amount of back pressure because this thing is clogged, and something's got to give. And what happens is the first thing that happens is the seals will fail in the turbocharger. And that's when you get a turbocharger that looks like this. Okay, this one's actually intact. The bearing's still intact in this one. Okay, but the uh, the seals have failed due to a huge amount of regen. Well, what happens is, is it pumps huge amounts of oil out, fills up the DPF even more, and it just stays in regen mode. Now, when you start to have a, a turbocharger failure, a seal failure like that, you know, usually you're hoping that your, your operator, the man that you have hired to drive your truck, uh, uh, will actually pay it close enough attention to know that there is something seriously wrong in the truck because it, it's smoking like holy hell, okay? There's no way you can miss it. This thing is is having a problem. But if they don't pay attention, what happens is all of the engine oil gets pumped out of the turbocharger until there's nothing left in the engine. And that's when everything gets real, real expensive. One of the things that we do every single time we do a turbocharger here at Power Stroke Specialty is we pull the oil filter and check to see if there's any brass in the filter, if there's any metal in the filter. We also pull the low pressure pump to see if it looks like any debris has passed through it. We do this in order to determine if the engine's actually hurt or not. When we had the tow truck here, we couldn't find any problems with these parts, so we, we went ahead and put the turbocharger back on and sent it back down the road. A couple weeks later, it comes back in on a tow truck, and you can see the cam bearing there has spun in the block. Also, all the mains have spun and destroyed the block. The block is ruined. There's, it's, it's not useful. I mean, you could possibly put it through a whole bunch of machine work, but for what you'd pay for the machine work to save this block, you could just go ahead and buy a good used one. So the block is trashed, the crank is trashed, uh, the connecting rods are trashed, 
Um, you know, motor's trash. I mean, the heads, I guess, are rebuildable, and the fuel injectors and, and pump, I suppose, are still good. But this is a catac cataclysmic failure uh, that was avoidable. Okay? And it all goes back to this. This is the bad guy right here. DPF is the bad guy. I keep a lot of these engines in stock just for this reason. Rebuildable cores. I go all over the country buying them. I mean, this is a small pile. Can't sell apples from the empty car, you know? So I, I keep these things in stock just for this very reason. So what is it you can do as a 6.4 owner? I'm not here to incite fear like, oh my God, I gotta get rid of this thing because it's gonna, it's gonna break and it's gonna cost a boatload of money. No, that's not it. I have a solution and here it is. So if the DPF is the problem and that's what causes the initial failure that will end up taking your engine if you're not paying attention, what's the solution? Replace the DPF? That's a couple thousand dollars through the dealer. There's also a methodology of removing the DPF and having it cleaned out. They actually put it in an oven and bake it and it, and it gets all the crust out of the inside of the thing. And that costs about a thousand dollars to do that. There's a couple other aftermarket alternatives available. One of the methodologies of fixing this problem in the aftermarket is just put a straight pipe in here. Um, off-road pipe is what they call it with off-road tuning. It's not legal. If DOT catches you with this under here, um, you're going to get fined. Uh, but if you don't, if you live in a state that that doesn't require emissions inspections or visual inspections of diesel trucks, you might be able to get away with it. If you're going to go this route and actually change out the uh, the pipe back there, keep your tailpipe stock. I've had several people I know that have done this total deletion process here. Uh, and if there's any black on the back fender of your truck or, or these, these stock tailpipes here, it's just calling DOT to stop you and check your truck out. You know, it's your truck, you do what you want with it. But that's my recommendation if you choose to go that route. If you're going to install the off-road pipe, you got to have tuning to, to accommodate the, the DPF being gone, okay? Uh, one of the most popular ones is Spartan tuning. Uh, there's many different vendors out there that will sell it to you. Cobbs uh, out of Tennessee, um, Rudy's, uh, there's a whole bunch of them. Uh, but Spartan is probably the best off-road tuning that there is. Uh, and it comes with this dash deck, which is really nice. And you actually tune through the dash deck. It's a little bit of a complicated process to get it set up, but once it's set up, it works actually very, very well. And what's nice is with the dash deck, you've got e your EGTs, your engine coolant temperature, engine oil temp, uh, RPM, and it, you can actually change these gauges to be whatever you want them to be and have little beeps when you, you get outside of parameters. The only downfall of this system is, is again, you're, you're $2,500. Uh, your couple grand for just the, the pipe and the system and then it takes a little bit of labor to put it in. There's one other method of dealing with a DPF that's actually much less expensive and it's fairly stealthy in its manner. Basically you take the DPF out of the, out of the truck and you got it, take the insides out of it, put it back in. It's kind of like the, for you guys who remember, it's kind of like the 70's all over again, you know, when, the, when we used to gut the cats back in the 70's. Same idea. Um, you take the insides out of it, retune the truck, she gets far better fuel economy, more power. And the most important part about this process of, of turning off the DPF, turning off the EGR system, is that you're not running the heat through the engine. The one added benefit of going the stealth way is, is that the can is still there. So if you have a visual inspection at any time uh, by the authorities, then you know the can is there. So there's a bunch of different ways of how to deal with, with the DPF issue. You either replace it with a new one, you have either have your one cleaned, uh, you can either go the full Monty and go with a full performance setup, which is expensive, or you can just leave the, the DPF in there just with nothing in it and retune. But the fact of the matter is, is that if you don't deal with the DPF at whatever level you choose to, at some point it's going to cost you. I can guarantee you that. And when there's problems that occur with this, they get very, very expensive very, very quickly. You want to be able to deal with the DPF problem and have it dealt with on your time when it's convenient for you. You don't want the thing to break down halfway between here and there when you've got a money job riding on the truck getting there with materials or you're on vacation and you were enjoying yourself until you had to sit at you know, Ford dealership or some shop trying to straighten it out. Do it on your time. Make a proactive decision to deal with the DPF on your truck. By doing this procedure it turns a 6.4 engine into a very dependable power plant and much more fuel efficient. You're not pumping gas dollars out your tailpipe 
to try to knock the, the soot out of the inside of this can. You know, the 6.4 is a wonderful engine. I actually have a 2010 that I put together from a rollover. I bought a rollover, 30,000 mile rollover truck cheap and put it back together and I love the thing. It's going to cost you dearly at some point. It's not a matter of if, it's when. It's kind of like head gaskets on a 6 liter. It's going to happen at some point. I love my 6.4 truck. It's smooth, it's quiet, it's fast. Now it gets 22 miles a gallon. Just went to New Orleans and back. The thing logged 22.3 miles a gallon on the pump gas. Uh, what a fantastic ride. Smooth, quiet. I mean, I can actually hear my telephone. I mean, I love Spot, but I can actually hear my telephone in this truck, you know? So I want to keep the truck a long time. It's going to last me the next 10 or 15 years, just like Spot did. I want to go two, three, four, five hundred thousand in it. But you can't do that and keep that DPF on there at the same time. That DPF is going to get you at some point. Give us a call, 770-931-4070.